Hello guys, in this lecture we are going to learn how to perform true dynamic analysis of earthquake forces with the help of ground motion data. And at the end we will compare the results of all the three methods, equivalent static method, response spectrum method and time history method like this. As the name suggests, in time history analysis, we calculate the complete structure response at each time interval for a given ground motion shaking. The ground motion data provides us the instantaneous acceleration values at each time interval that is then later on converted into forces and displacements to calculate the structure, bending moment, shear force, torsion forces at each time interval. The maximum among these forces for the entire time interval is then selected for structural design. Whereas in response spectrum method, we were picking up the peak values of acceleration from a very specific spectrum acceleration curve and we were calculating the structural response for those peak values. In response spectrum method, we were not calculating the structural response at each time interval as response spectrum method was not taking ground motion data into account. Now the difference between these three methods is very clear. The equivalent static method does not rely on model analysis and ground motion data. So it completely fails to figure out the true dynamic response of a building. Whereas response spectrum method relies on model analysis, so it comes somewhat close to true response but fails to predict the exact force distribution as it does not take ground motion data and its acceleration into account. Rather, it depends on a very simple spectral curve that gives pseudo peak values. Whereas in time history method, we take help of both model analysis and true ground motion data and calculate the building response at each time interval. Through this, we are able to predict the true response of a building for a given ground motion data. The key difference between response spectrum method and time history method is the consideration of ground motion data. So let's see how the ground motion data looks like and how we can get these graphs for free. Before the boom of electronic devices, engineers used to record the ground motion data through a pendulum seismograph like this. A very interesting picture of recorded ground motion data is provided by Seismology Department of India. The earthquake came on 21st of July 1956, which was recorded by Meteorological Department of Pune. As you can see, for the initial time, there is no shaking. So we have straight lines. So as soon as the earthquake arrived at around 3.33 pm, the pendulum recorded the ground shaking. As we can see from the shaking data that it was sudden and intense earthquake. Interestingly, if you see at the bottom of this picture, the epicenter was at Kutch. So very early on in 1956, the Kutch Gujarat was giving early signs that something is going under its earth's surface, which unfortunately resulted in a large earthquake of magnitude 7.7, .7, which lasted for two minutes on 26th of January 2001 at Bhuj Kutch area. It took life of 12,300 people. As in the recent year, Bhuj earthquake is the only event that occurred with this much intensity. So we are going to take its ground motion data for our building time history analysis. As Bhuj lies in fifth zone and our building lies in second zone, so we will definitely be scaling down the acceleration values to match with our site specific spectrum curves. So that this earthquake can represent a future earthquake event at our site. Otherwise, it will make no sense to our building analysis at this site. Now, if you want to learn advanced dynamic analysis of a building, then we have a right course for you. I've made a complete advanced ETEPS, RCDC and SAFE building design course in which you will be learning how to calculate dynamic analysis loads like response spectrum, time history, how to calculate static wind force and dynamic wind force through gust factor method. All these excel sheets will also be provided in this course. A very advanced method of wind analysis through CFD method is also included in this course. Complete in-depth RCDC software is also included which has designed and detailing of beams, columns, slabs, staircase and water tank lectures in it. Foundation design through SAFE software is also included. So this one advanced course will make you pro in structural design and you can start taking large scale projects on your own. For the interested one, I have included the link in the description below. Now let's quickly see how we can download these ground shaking acceleration values for free. There are many sites that offer ground motion data. Like peer ground motion database, other one is strong motion center and there are many more. 
I have found Strong Motion Center website easy for searching earthquake data for Indian station. So let's open this website from Google Chrome. Once it is open, click on search for data button. We will choose worldwide ground response data. Once open here, we will choose data search. It will take few seconds to open. You can copy paste the search link directly into Google Chrome browser. It is available in the ground motion database link file inside your download folder. Here in the event name, we will enter Bhuj. If you want to search all the earthquake data for Indian stations, then you can enter India here and click on search button. We are only interested in Bhuj earthquake, so we will keep station as empty. Below these entries, there are detailed search options available as mechanism, structure, site condition. We are going to keep all these options ticked. You can also search earthquake data by magnitude range, date of occurrence, peak acceleration. You can choose the station owner and region as well. We are interested in Bhuj earthquake only, so we will leave these parameters to its default values. Scroll down and click on search button. Here you can see we have got the data for Bhuj Kutch earthquake that took place at 8.46 am on 26 January 2001. The station that recorded this ground motion was Ahmedabad and its distance from earthquake epicenter was 239 km. If we want to see how the ground motion graph look like, then we can click on plot acceleration link. Here you can see the X direction, Y direction and Z direction acceleration graph for Bhuj earthquake. The data is available for 134 seconds from which the main shaking took place between 29 seconds to 62 seconds. For Z direction, it took from 0 to 62 seconds. These graphs are giving us a clear idea that we should ignore these data before 29 seconds and after 62 seconds as not much of shaking is taking place at this time period. And if we import and analyze for the complete chart in ETAPS, then we will be only wasting our time and energy as nothing is happening at this time period. So looking at these charts early on can help us to save time and energy. Now come back to the previous page, we will select all the X direction, Y direction and Z direction data to be downloaded. So tick this add this to bin checks, then click on go to bin button. As you can see, all three direction data are added to the download bin, so click on proceed to download data button. To download this data, you need to have an account on this website. I already have an account, so I will enter my email ID to log in. If you do not have an account, then you can enter your email ID here to start creating your account. Once login, untick this Fourier response as we are not interested in these values. Then zip the checked files with this button. Click on download file link to start downloading this file. Once download, open this zip file. And drag and drop these files into a separate folder like this. We have got all these three files. So before we jump into ETAPS and start importing these files, let's first understand how these files contain data in them. Understanding them will help us to import the data quickly in ETAPS. Open the first file in Notepad. Here you can see the first initial lines of this data file provide information about the earthquake and the recorded data below which will help us to import this data into ETAP. Here it states that this data is for Bhuj earthquake which took place on 26 January at 8.46 am. Body wave magnitude of 7 MB and surface wave magnitude of 7.6 ms on Richter scale. The station which recorded the data was Ahmedabad. Latitude and longitude are also given for this station location. Here you can see the Xlogram device has applied a filter to ignore any frequency below 0.07 Hz and above 27 Hz, which is what we talked about in our response spectrum lecture for frequency cutoff values. As we know, the earthquake wave frequency hardly goes over 15 Hz, so this filter has done our job, so we do not have to filter these values on our own. As per IS code, we have to ignore value for frequency above 33 Hz. It is also stating that the peak acceleration took place at 46.94 seconds 
having a value of 1.03 meter per second square. For us, this sixth line is very important as it gives the complete detail how to import this data into ETAPS. It states that there are 26,706 acceleration data points present in this file. The unit of this acceleration data is meter per second square. Unit of acceleration is very important for us, so we will look into this value later on in ETAPS. And the most important parameter is time interval values that is 0.005 second. This means the acceleration value has been recorded at an interval of passing 0.005 second each time. So the value at 0 is minus 0.218 e power minus 2 then at 0.005 it is minus 0.229 e power minus 2 then at 0.01 second it is minus 0.235 e power minus 2 then at 0.015 second it is minus 0.236 e power minus 2 and so on. We can also see that the acceleration value start after sixth line and in a single row there are eight acceleration values. So the values of time interval of 0.005 second, the line after which acceleration value start that is sixth line and then number of records in each line are very important parameter that we have to enter into ETAPS to successfully import and create the ground motion in ETAPS file. Now before we move on to ETAPS, keep this thing in mind that we purposely have done a mistake here in these files and we will correct them later on so that you can learn from it and never repeat those mistakes again. As we have a good understanding of how to download ground motion data and how to read set value from files, so we are now ready to import this ground motion data into ETAPS file. Switch to the last working file. The process of time history analysis is very similar to response spectrum analysis. First, we will be defining our acceleration function. Then we will be using that function to apply forces onto our building. So let's get started. Break the analysis result. Then come to the define menu. Then to functions. This time choose time history instead of response spectrum function. We can choose many predefined functions from the list. But as we have a complete ground motion data with us, so we will choose from file option from the list and click on add new function button. A complete time history function window will open in front of us. First, we will choose the ground motion file that we want to import into ETAPS. So click on browse button. Choose the file that we downloaded from the ground motion database inside your ground motion data folder. Here it is asking for additional values so that ETAPS can read this file correctly. From the file we know that the first 6 line provides only the information about the data that we need to skip. So enter 6 in the header line to skip. There is no prefix characters in our data line. There are straightforward acceleration numbers so keep it 0. As we have discussed before, there are 8 number of acceleration values in a single line. So enter number of points per line to 8. As we know the acceleration value are recorded at equal time interval of 0.005 second. So choose the value at equal interval option and enter value of 0.005 second. Format type will be free format. Now as you can see that the plotted graph looks nothing like what we saw on the strong motion data website. This is the moment where most of the young engineers do mistakes. Once they get these files, they try to import these files into ETAPS time history function like this. They set up all the values correctly like time interval, line to be ignored and number of data per line. But still they do not get correct graph. So they try to change these values but nothing happens and at the end they give up and stick to the response spectrum method only. This is not the path that you have to follow. As we are doing a professional course, so we will look into the roots of the problem. Logically thinking, we have put all the parameters right into the ETAPS. That leaves us with one option only, that there is something wrong with the file data itself. So let's check the data. Open the file. When you will look closely at the initial lines, then we can see it is giving us velocity and displacement values as well. That means that there are velocity and displacement data as well in this file. So let's see if this is the case. Press Ctrl plus F on the keyboard to open the search window. Type velocity and click on find next. Yes, we have velocity data as well. This is why ETAPS is getting confused in creating the graph as this file contains multiple parameter values. Now select and drag down like this 
so that all the values for velocity and displacement get selected like this. Once done, press delete key on the keyboard to delete all these extra parameter points. Save the file to make changes. Now we will import this file again in e tabs. Click on browse button, choose your file again and click on open. As soon as we import the file and our entry points are correct, e tabs will display the ground motion data to us like this. So this is how we import ground motion data into eTabs. So always make a habit to check the ground motion data file till the bottom if there is any extra parameter values or something is wrong with the data file itself. If you do not see the imported graph correctly in eTabs. Now if we were an amateur engineer then we would have given a name to this function like bhuj ground motion x and clicked on ok button. But we have to design professional buildings for our client. So we will learn how professionals make changes to find out results faster. As discussed before, you can see the main ground motion action is taking place from 29 second and ending it at 62 second. So it is sensible not to import this ground motion data before 29 second and after 62 second into e-tabs 